Erev Tov Khabri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. News is breaking all across Europe, even into Brazil. Of course, those many are already aware of the struggles in Brazil. But first, we're going to be going right to what's happening uh, here in uh, Russia. In fact, uh, uh, not sure exactly where it's going on. We'll be going into that. Ukraine, uh, Paris, riots breaking out in Paris, continuing that is. Uh, but before we get started, let's go right here to Zero Hedge. Zero Hedge is actually reporting from the New York Times. It's actually where I got it at myself first that Russia, according to sources at the New York Times there, Russia has actually moved one of its cruise missile uh, battalions uh, away from the test zone to put it actually into service. No doubt there is concerns by NATO that this uh, missile defense or this uh, cruise missile system has been moved closer to the European border. Let me kind of just give you a little update here. What Tyler Durden has said here, Russia secretly de uh, deploys banned cruise missiles in a latest challenge to Trump. It's exactly right. So more and more we're beginning to see like the missile, uh, Cuban missile crisis of John F. Kennedy when he was faced with Russia deploying nuclear uh, bombs down in Cuba. And we brought this out when it came to Kaliningrad. It was NATO's uh, uh, Cuban missile crisis all over again. But it seems like that President Trump, much like President Kennedy, is the one being put in the hot seat when it comes to something this serious here. Uh, according to uh, the 1987 treaty that the U.S. had with uh, the Soviet Union at that time was that there would be no ballistic missiles. It could go 500 up uh, anywhere from 500 kilometers to 5,500 kilometers on a land-based type system. That would be nowhere in Europe. But then again, NATO has constantly built up upon Russia's border, also in Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, all the Baltic states, Estonia, now Romania, and even we're finding out that uh, the U.S. has brought in a destroyer in the Black Sea, and there's also been uh, another uh, or an upcoming um, uh, with NATO, some of the forces there will be doing another training exercise inside the Black Sea, really causing nerves with Russia to get more and more on edge. And even though President Trump has talked about wanting to have a better relationship with Russia and even possibly lifting the sanctions, slowly but surely, all this is changing as the tensions grow greater and greater with Russia and NATO, with each of them doing their own types of war games on each other's borders there. Saw a picture recently there with the United States military gathered up against the fence there with machine guns and rocket, per, uh, per, uh, gr uh, excuse me, like a um, uh, grenade launchers, etc. Standing there getting a picture taken right next to, uh, in the background, a, fort a Russian fortress right against the fence. I guess that would make anybody just a little bit nervous to see all these machine guns and stuff coming up and posing for a picture that's pretty provocative if you ask me. Uh, but anyway, this is coming along. It's uh, something that's came out according to the New York Times. The person that released this information uh, did it on anonymity, uh, and, and, excuse me, did it to, uh, uh, said it secretly because he did not want the information to get out. It was very much a, a high risk for him to actually say it. Uh, so he, he spoke on a uh, condition of anonymity there. Uh, so anyway, um, let me take you on to some more things that we are seeing as well. And I think this is important to see. The United States as well has shipped in more, uh, more and more military equipment, including the, uh, the, uh, the helicopters, the Blackhawks, and of course uh, the, the Chinook, which is what you're seeing here on your screen now, the Chinook right here. These are, the Chinook is very well known for carrying in troops and uh, closer to a battlefield and dropping them off. Uh, but tremendous amount of hardware being moved up uh, to the uh, Baltics there and in Poland as well. It is if the entire NATO and Russia are preparing for a third world war. I had one journalist uh, who, uh, that I stay in contact with sent me a message today when I was speaking about uh, Russia's Zapad exercises and he assured that these are done as a defensive measure, not an offensive measure. But it looks like Russia must be expecting something bad to go down from some of the actions they're taking, especially the latest one after sending in the nuclear warhead missiles there into Kaliningrad. Now this new deployment of cruise missiles, no telling where at in Russia, no one has disclosed the location, but I'm sure there's a lot of fear that that's come closer to Europe. 
Um, also, we have this one in here. It came off of Conflict, Conflict News. It says, breaking multiple Russian aircraft came close to the U.S. destroyer in the Black Sea last week. U.S. officials on Reuters uh, has stated this information here. I've uh, not been able to corroborate any of this information, but that was stated today, and supposedly this just happened uh, here in the last few days. Kind of reminds us of the incident uh, up in the uh, Baltics there when Russia's... Uh, one of their Sequoias came down through there and disabled the USS Donald Cook, which later got the nickname the Donald Duck as a result of that. Another interesting news here, very concerning as well, and that is, uh, let me kind of let it play. I'll turn the volume down for you here. Uh, but this is a chemical plant inside of uh, the eastern part of Ukraine, the Donetsk region there. Uh, Russian officials came there after some very heavy, heavy bombing was done by the Ukrainian government. As you can see, they're not wearing any kind of gas mask of anything uh, of this nature here. It was a chemical plant, but it did not contain any weapons grade chemicals as they're showing by uh, the uh, Russian uh, scientists there that are there to test uh, not only the types of weapon that was used there on the plant, but also to show that there was not this chemical factory was not being used for wartime uh, chemicals. Uh, it is believed there was 152 uh, millimeter shells that were being used on the facility here. Uh, they did test it for mustard gas, chlorine gas, etc., and nothing was uh, found. No evidence of any of these things here. Which naturally, by the uh, the mere use of this. Uh, there that they're there without their mask on kind of shows that it was pretty, mu pretty much safe for them to be in that area there. Uh, irrefutable evidence, according to RT, says Kiev is using the WMD against East Ukraine civilians. Russian investigators are finding uh, this information out. These are some very, as you can see on your screen, some very large, large missiles. In fact, it is believed that those missiles there is what has been used on the uh, chemical weapons facility. At least that's one uh, take we have seen, not in the video that we just shared with you, but there's been others that have suggested that's in fact what they were using. Uh, President Trump also uh, is making, is standing behind uh, the uh, United States ambassador to the United Nations, Miss Haley, her comment that sanctions will not be lifted on Russia until Crimea is handed back over to the Ukrainians. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Maybe this is one reason why we're seeing the, the movement of uh, weapons and troops by Russia as well. Um, like I said, nobody knows where, but assuming that would be closer to Europe's border. Paris, by the way, is in an uproar tonight. According to Sputnik News, riots could uh, color France's presidential election of violence persist. If the suburbs of Paris are unable to subdue rioters, the dynamics of the French presidential election campaign are likely to change. Journalist Thomas uh, Guanol told Sputnik of France there. Uh, our good friend Renzi also sent me uh, this video here just moments ago uh, showing the, the riots, the burning of the van uh, that took place today. There, and, and this has been an ongoing issue where rioters have been setting cars on fire, torching things. Uh, it is getting very, very much out of hand in Paris. And it seems here lately that Paris has become the magnet for all types of unrest and trouble. We know that uh, Paris also has a, a very, very large uh, immigrant popul or refugee population as well. And whether or not who all is involved in this is hard to say, but nonetheless, it is uh, making for some very unsafe conditions for French citizens uh, living there in Paris uh, with this type of riots and things going on. Uh, moving on to our final uh, message here to share with you guys here, and that is over in Brazil. Brazil also in turmoil with unrest going on. The police have been on strike now for about a week in one of the uh, town, one of the excuse me, one of the states of Brazil's uh, province. There, the uh, Brazilian government has had to send in the military. There have been a hundred fatalities as a result since uh, the police have gone on strike. Uh, protesting the conditions that they are dealing with there. It's just really becoming a, a world of 
seeming almost complete chaos, very troubling in the times that we're living in. I uh, also want to remind you guys as we uh, close out this evening, this evening's news broadcast will be in Israel next month, March the 28th. Your help in doing this mission to the Israeli people is a vital need. It is a very expensive endeavor uh, to be able to rent the facility where we will be speaking to our, our Israeli uh, friends there, as well as you're invited as well. It'll be March the 28th, uh, but just to be able to rent the facility alone is like $3,000. Doesn't even count trying to get there, the hotel cost, airfare, etc. So we are reaching out to you, and if it's something that you feel will be a blessing, and we believe it is to try to warn the Israeli people of the prophetic uh, the prophetic implications that are happening all around Israel that are happening in modern days, looking at the prophecies that sages have never pointed out to our Israeli brothers and sisters there and how it clearly is setting the stage for the coming of the Mashiach, the coming of the Messiah. And we want to try to get this message over to our Israeli friends. So if you would like to be a part of that, your uh, help is desperately needed. Please go to IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. I'll put the link to both our websites there in the video below, as well as our physical address here in Prague, Czech Republic, Post Office Box 46, uh, if you prefer to send by mail. Thank you very much. So many, by the way, uh, I should say uh, uh, a few I should, should, is more the correct way have been so kind to send uh, your gifts to us here by mail. And one in particular, I, I wish I had the envelope here with me, but we had one in particular that was probably the most awesome blessing of all uh, because it arrived. Someone had placed a, a small cash donation in there and what they had wrote on the envelope on how much they had put in there was exactly what was in there. But what made it so interesting, there was no postage on the envelope whatsoever. There was no return address to where we could thank the, uh, the sister that had sent it. But we want you to know that it got here and it had to be the providence of God because generally the mail doesn't like delivering uh, letters overseas, especially a heavy letter uh, because it had some coins in there as well. They don't like delivering that without postage but it made it here anyway. I think that was just God's mercy. Thank you, God bless you, and thank you for, for all you do to help us keep this broadcast going. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, Shalom.